For years, we've seen many influential members of the Mafia come and go. Whether they were an instrumental part to the success of the mob, or whether they were a major player responsible for bringing the mob down, you can't argue that it's had its fair share of characters. From the intimidating and violent mobsters to the smart and businesslike mobsters, right through to mobsters who managed to hold plenty of political influence. The biggest question has always been, who are the top 10 of all time? With hundreds to choose from, we decided to put it to public vote in our latest video, which showcases the top 10 mobsters of all time. In at number 10, the flamboyant and dapper John Gotti, a man who didn't shy away from the cameras, but embraced the public limelight. He was the man that brought the 1972 film, The Godfather, to life. Here are the top three reasons that John Gotti made it onto the top 10 list. One, Gotti worked his way up to lead the Gambino crime family after orchestrating a hit on the present boss of the time, Paul Castellano. He would then go on to be dubbed the Teflon Don and the mob symbol of invincibility because charges against him just wouldn't stick. Two, it's estimated that while John Gotti acted as boss, the Gambino family made more than $500 million in revenue from illegal activities such as gambling, drug trafficking, extortion, and stock fraud. Three, finally, despite not keeping a low profile like most successful mafia bosses, Gotti brought the godfather to life in the public eye and became a local hero. He was the stereotypical mobster who quickly grouped together a large following who, to this day, still support the Dapper Don. In at number nine is the man they call the Chin, Vincent Gigante. Gigante was clever and managed to find ways to avoid the law coming down on him, from walking the streets in a bathrobe to placing an acting boss in front of him. Here are three reasons why Vincent Gigante came in at ninth on the all-time list. One. Despite failing to kill Frank Costello in a 1957 plot ordered by Vito Genovese, Gigante still managed to continue his criminal career and would eventually take over the family in the early 1980s. Two, in order to avoid being prosecuted, Gigante faked mental problems for decades to protect him while on trial, often wandering the streets in a bathrobe, to which the media dubbed him the Odd Father. Three, a shrewd mob leader, Gigante would demand that when a mobster referred to him that they would point to their chin so as not to be recorded on wiretaps. Chin derived from his mother's use of the Italian pronunciation of his given name, Vincenzo. Number eight features one of the most intimidating mobsters in the history of the mafia, the Lord High Executioner himself, Albert Anastasia. Here are the three reasons why Albert Anastasia made it to eighth. One, one of the most feared mobsters of all time, who helped run the mob's enforcement arm, Murder Incorporated with Lepke Buckhalter. Due to his violent temper and work as a hitman, he was quickly given the intimidating nickname, the Lord High Executioner. Two, after the disappearance of his boss, Vincent Mangano, Anastasia would go on to lead what would later become known as the Gambino crime family. Three, Anastasia's brutal murder in 1957 made headlines across the world and is still remembered as one of the mob's most gruesome killings. After Anastasia comes his biggest rival and the person responsible for that 1957 hit on him, in number seven, we have Don Vito Genovese. Here are the three reasons that put Vito Genovese on the NCS's top 10 mobsters of all time list. One. Vito rose to power during Prohibition as one of the mob's best enforcers and would later become leader of his own family, the Genovese crime family. Two, his commanding presence and intimidation would see Genovese take control of the New York area for a period of time in 1957 after he worked with Carlo Gambino to get rid of Lucky Luciano's allies. Three, in 1937, after being deported to Italy, he became a friend of Benito Mussolini, financing several fascist operations while engaged in narcotic smuggling to the United States. When you think of the mobsters and the mafia, usually one person comes to the forefront of your mind, the mobster who is stereotyped even today, the big shot, Al Capone. No list of the greatest mobsters of all time can be complete without a mention of this guy. So here are the three reasons why Al Capone made it on the top 10 list. One, 
In 1920, during the height of Prohibition, Capone's multi-million dollar Chicago operation in bootlegging, prostitution and gambling dominated the organized crime scene. Two, newspapers of the time estimated Capone's operations generated $100 million in revenue annually. Three, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre of 1929 was a plot by Jimmy Byrne and Al Capone to take out seven Northside gang mobsters. Although Capone was staying at his Miami home at the time, the public and the media immediately blamed him for the massacre. He was dubbed public enemy number one. We now make our way to the top five mobsters of all time. And settling at fifth place on the leaderboard is the real Joe Batters, who started life as Al Capone's bodyguard. We bring you Tony Accardo. Here are three reasons why Tony Accardo made it into the top five. One, Accardo controlled one family that spanned across the whole of Chicago, where New York was split into five families. Two, from 1906 until his death in 1992, he only spent one night in jail in a criminal career that spanned eight incredible decades. Three, Accardo came to infamy as a hitman for Al Capone and allegedly participated in the Valentine's Day Massacre of 1929, the Frankie Yale hit of 1928, and the killing of two outfit traitors at a dinner table in which he received the name Joe Batters from Al Capone due to his skill with a baseball bat. Some people say that without the financial brains of our mobster who came in at number four, that the mafia would never have been as successful as it was. They weren't wrong. In fourth spot, we have none other than Meyer Lansky, the mob's accountant. Without further ado, here are the three main reasons why Meyer Lansky takes fourth. One, despite being of Jewish background in an era when Italian Americans ran the mob, his admirable knowledge of business and finances made him a key figure in helping to strengthen the mob. Two, between 1932 and 1934, Lansky joined Luciano and Johnny Torrio, amongst others, in forming the National Crime Syndicate and became one of its major overseers and bankers, often laundering funds through foreign accounts. Three, by 1970, it is said that the total holdings for Meyer were estimated to be at $300 million. It's the time you've all been waiting for, the top three countdown. So who do you think made it onto the podium as the top three mobsters of all time? In third spot, we have someone who had massive political influence, who was aptly nicknamed the Prime Minister of the Underworld. We bring you Frank Costello. Here are the three reasons why Frank Costello made it into the top three mobsters of all time. One, he started off life as a down and out kid who rose to lead what is today known as the Genovese crime family. Two, Frank had many connections in the political arena which helped his influence in the underworld. By the 1940s, he had virtually taken control of New York politics through his connections in the Democratic Party at Tammany Hall. Three, despite nearly being killed in a 1957 power move attempted by Vito Genovese, Frank always preferred to swap the gun for a handshake in many of his business dealings. A low profile, intelligent and intimidating character takes second place in our countdown a mobster who during his time took his crime family to become one of the biggest in the nation, which is still named after him today. Second place goes to Don Carlo Gambino. Here are three main reasons why Carlo Gambino was voted in at number two on the list. One, Carlo earned the family over $500 million a year, gave the nod for many contracted hits, and ran the family with an iron fist for over 20 years. Two, in 50 years of crime, he served only 22 months in prison between 1937 38. Three, he was low profile, but a ruthless mob boss who came up through the ranks from the early inception of the commission. During his reign, he never had an attempt made on his life. Finally, we now unveil the man that everyone voted as the most important mobster of all time. The man who came in at the number one spot where many of you believe he belonged and we can't argue with this decision. He was the man who they call the chairman of the mob, the man who Murder Incorporated had to report to. He was a man of respect and a man who changed the way the mob operated, creating a sustainable future that would take the mob into the present day. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you Charles Lucky Luciano, the founding father of the mob. Here are the top three reasons on why Lucky Luciano gets crowned 
as the number one mobster of all time. One, he restructured the mafia after planning the assassinations of Salvatore Maranzano and Joe Masseria, bosses of the Mustache Pete era of the mafia. Lucky implemented fundamental changes to how the mob was run, creating a business approach to organized crime and putting an end to bloodshed which drew the attention of law officials. Two, he set up the commission to act as a governing body for organized crime on a nationwide scale, which took the mob to a new level, and he also split New York into five families. Three, Lucky also offered to help in the war effort during World War II by using his criminal connections in Italy to advance the Allies' cause. This brings the top 10 mobsters of all time as voted by you, the public, to a close. Be sure to check out our other mob-related videos only at the National Crime Syndicate.